I'm Annie Laurie Gaylor. Welcome to Free Thought Batters. And I'm Dan Barker. We are executive directors of the Freedom From Religion Foundation, which produces Free Thought Matters, a talk show devoted to the undevoted, the 25% of the U.S. population today that is non-religious or religiously unaffiliated. Bet you didn't know the legendary actor Ed Asner was not religious and in fact was an honorary director of the Freedom From Religion Foundation until his death at age 91 on August 29, 2021. Interviewing Ed in late 2019 was so much fun and an honor. We're rerunning that interview as our memorial to a great and beloved actor and humanitarian. ratings have been week in and week out absolutely terrible. But lately they've started to slip. <laughs> what are you implying, Lou? That I'm going downhill, that I'm getting slipshod, that I'm losing my touch? I mean, if that's what you mean, why don't you come right out and say it? You've gone downhill, you've gotten slipshod, and you've lost the touch. <laughs> come on, Lou, be serious. <laughs> That clip of actor Ed Asner in a classic Lou Grant moment is a preview of our show today. Welcome to Free Thought Matters. I'm Annie Laurie Gaylor. And I'm Dan Barker. Annie Laurie and I are co-presidents of the Freedom From Religion Foundation. We're a national association of free thinkers working to keep religion out of government. Please join us today in our vital work at FFRF. Dot org. Our guest today is TV legend and progressive Ed Asner, who most kindly dropped by our Stephen Yule Friendly Atheist Studio while he is in Madison to play God in the timely political play, God Help Us. Ed Asner, of course, is known for portraying journalist Lou Grant on the Mary Tyler Moore 1970s sitcom and in a dramatic spinoff for 12 years. Ed Asner has won more primetime Emmy Awards than any other male actor and is one-time president of the Screen Actors Guild. Among his nearly 400 credits on TV and on the stage and in movies are other beloved roles in the movies Up and as Santa in the movie Elf and a recent guest spot in the Netflix series Dead to Me. Ed Asner's also made a name for himself as a political activist, fighting for union workers and fighting against injustice, and he is in town to fundraise for the Progressive magazine. So thank you so much, Ed, for joining us today. My pleasure. And I was lucky enough last night to see the play. It was fabulous. Uh, you're a ham. And I just learned that the play was kind of tailor-made for you to play God. Yes, yes. I, I, I shaped it into my shape. In your, in, in your own image, as yes, they say. Yes, yes. In yeah. God's image. Yeah, that's right. Yes. And, and somebody asked you, how did you um, prepare for the role? Do you remember what you told that interviewer? Oh. You looked in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't see the horns when I looked. <laughs> So it had to be either horns or, yeah. or halos or one of the other I, I ones. I think they, they exist, but you you, you got to catch them when they're hot. Yeah. It looks like you're having a lot of fun portraying God. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, uh, we like to screw around a lot. <laughs> so before we talk more about that and why you're doing this, we do have uh, the trailer for the play that we can watch uh, that introduces what the whole play is all about. Let's okay. watch that. All right. This is CNN Breaking News. Looking to rebound after a series of missteps. I, Donald John Trump. <sighs> Let there be light. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and those of you of fluid gender, welcome to the circus where the elephants and the donkeys are flinging crap all over my creation. In other words, politics as usual. Tonight I will be the moderator of a great debate. It's 
Look who just got elected. The people spoke. Three million more voted for Hillary. Trump won in the Electoral College. The Electrical College? Is that one of those online schools? I see here two stubborn people who refuse to walk in each other's shoes. That is the problem. The force is not with you. I may need to reboot. Oh, please don't do that. Just give us a chance. Can't you see we're trying, God? Well, it's been trying for me, too. To all of you out there in the darkness, come into the light, because it's all up to you. I gave you free will, so go forth and get it together. Or if you don't, it's the end. So, Ed, um, first of all, I was amazed that that was 90 minutes and there was no intermission. Mm. That's quite a tour de force. How do you do it? You just turned 90. <laughs> the power of God. Yeah. Now, now I, first of all, I, I read a lot of it. I, I, I catch, catch a peek here, peek there, peek there, peek here, peek here. Mm. And uh, uh, they have so gratified me by sticking me in with a line a page, practically. And it's always the punchline. Yes. Mm. So that uh, <laughs> uh, I can get away with murder. And I didn't realize that your daughter, um, Liza uh, Asner, is the producer of the show. Yes, yeah, she's my booker, my producer, and she works her butt off. And, and does the technical work. Yeah. Which is very effective. Yeah. Lots of lightning and oh, loud noises. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We two are with two shows. I do this show, God Help Us, which requires uh, a couple of uh, people from the local talent and we got some very nice talent here, and then I uh, and then I alternate, why uh, with the other show, which is strictly single, and that's called a man and his prostate. A man and his prostate. Yes, and I got to see that one. <laughs> oh, you got to feel it too. <laughs> so I understand that that was also tailor made for you, by mm. by somebody that you. Ed Weinberger was a producer writer on. Mary Tyler Moore, and he, uh, he wrote it, and uh, it fits like a glove, or like a latex glove, I ah, should say. That's a good line. Mm -hmm. Was that in the play? <laughs> <laughs> no. So you're portraying God. Um, do you mind if I ask whether you believe in God? I don't know if I do or not. Hmm. I, uh, uh, I don't think so, but... Um, uh, the uh, what, what is the what is the old cliche? Uh, any port in a storm. <laughs> oh know, yeah. Uh, 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 there are no atheists in foxholes. That's the one I was. Oh yeah. Trying. Well, there actually are. There actually were. But, yeah, I'm uh, sure there were. But, but uh, yeah, yeah. That uh, sentiment of maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I, but uh, hey, hey, it can't hurt. But God is good for laughs, at least. You yeah. got a lot of those lines. Yeah, in. yeah. Uh, we, we try to make him as funny, as comedic as possible. It was very funny. Uh, you were raised Jewish, right? Yeah. yeah. So Orthodox, Orthodox Jewish? Yeah. Yeah. Did, and it didn't take? Well, it did. I, I, it was drilled into me very intensively hmm. by my aged father and, uh, and his sweetheart mother, uh, my sweetheart mother. And um, it's... My bar mitzvah was a gross failure. Uh. It was a terrible, terrible. I sang too high, I sang too fast, and uh, I think my dad probably cursed me on that day. <laughs> but do you know some Hebrew from that? Oh, well, yeah. Ah. <laughs> Baruch Adonai, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's... Um, it's a good religion to uh, to pick pigeons from. Pigeons? Yeah, uh, I uh, I was a pigeon in the religion, huh. and uh, it uh, I I clung to it all these years because of my doctrination, and because 
of the outside world's discrimination against Jews. Mm -hmm. So if I didn't care to practice it, I at least felt that they needed my assistance in fighting off the pagans. Most of my Jewish friends say they love the heritage, yeah. but not the, the doctrine. They, yeah. they just love grandma's prayer songs. Yeah. And the, yeah. uh, what do they say? Passover is to pass the food over, basically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and that, that, it's a lovely holiday. It's yeah. it's uh, call it our Thanksgiving, yeah. but uh, it uh, this too shall pass. Yeah. So you've also said that though that your faith is in the theater, and that that you found your faith in religion withering. Do you remember saying that? No, but uh, uh, I certainly would endorse it. Yeah. So. So what's the premise of the play? God is trying to solve an argument? What's happening in this? Uh... Between uh, the divisiveness of society and uh, the Western society, anyway. Yeah. So he, uh, he decides to bring together two lovers who had been lovers, who are of totally different faiths in terms of political, social uh, devotion. Yeah. And... Uh, he, um, he gets, gets stumped time after time after time by the couple and their w willingness to fight each other and, and uh, renounce their former uh, love uh, until finally he, God stumbled to the fact that getting them to walk in each other's shoes is the trick. Ah, to see another point of view. Mm. So that's your job to arbitrate or to... Well, to arbitrate in the beginning and then I finally give up in <laughs> hopelessness <laughs> and just get them to walk in each other's shoes. So, um, Ed, before we go out on the break, when you asked my name and I told you it's Annie Laurie, you started singing this song mm -hmm. and you said you would sing it for me again. Say please. Please. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people don't know it. I don't know why I learned that song, but I love it. Mm. Max Wilton's braids are bunny where early fars the dew <laughs> and twas there that Annie Laurie gave me her promise true, gave me a promise true, which ne'er forgot will be. And for Bonnie and Lori, <laughs> I'd lay me down and deep. Thank you. That was beautiful. Okay, but she's already married, you know. She's <laughs> oh, did you hint on her? <laughs> Well, that was wonderful. We actually saw Max Welton's braids in Scotland, the actual place where she... Uh, they were Bonnie. Where they were it Bonnie. It was Bonnie. We have to take a break. When uh, we come back, Ed, we want to ask who you prefer playing, Santa or God. Uh, we'll be right back with Free Thought Matters. Hi, I'm Ron Reagan, an unabashed atheist. When I first recorded that commercial back in 2014, being openly atheist in America was still fairly uncommon. Today, the fastest growing religious group in the country is the non-religious, especially among the young. That progress is heartening, but the religious pushback is fierce and the forces of Christian nationalism are well organized. Our progress won't continue unless we work together so that reason and our secular constitution will prevail. That's why I'm asking you to join the Freedom From Religion Foundation, the nation's largest and most effective association of atheists and agnostics working to keep state and church separate, just like our founders intended. Please join the Freedom From Religion Foundation today. Ron Reagan, lifelong atheist, not afraid of burning in hell. 
I'm Ken, and I'm an out-of-the-closet atheist. For me, it was never a choice whether to become an atheist or not. It was just more of a natural progression. I never had an aha moment or any precise moment in time where I decided to suddenly switch gears. I was raised in a somewhat religious environment. I was a pretty liberal Lutheran family, but it just seemed the more I grew and learned and basically matured, I just kept you know, looking to the person to the left of me and to the right of me, and, you know, it, I couldn't believe more and more that, you know, other people were actually believing this stuff, whereas I was, you know, progressing into a mindset that this is entirely not true. And it was never, you know, a decision for me. It was just a natural occurrence. And so I think of myself as a natural atheist if there ever was one. Welcome back. We're continuing our conversation with legendary actor Ed Asner, who's currently portraying God in a play called God Help Us. So you have played God, and you've played Santa, I think, at least five times. Oh, at least. Which do you prefer? God or Santa? Yeah. Uh, I can sleep at night at Santa. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's gone. I get very restless. Uh, yeah, trying to heal the rips and tears of the world, you know. Yeah, all of our that petitions and anti-religionists create uh, those rents and tears. I, it's <laughs> just endless. Uh, there us, aren't enough band aids. Us godless heathens are. are you What's saying that? us godless heathens? You're us. saying that godless heathens are causing problems. Yeah. Godless heathens? Godless God. heathens. Oh, heathens. Yeah. Heathens. So <laughs> you also played a character that I don't think you agree with. You played William Jennings Bryan mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in a play with the actor John Delancey, who's yeah. been on he's been on this show before. Yeah. And uh, he was really praising your your acting because he, we don't think you actually are a creationist, are you? Like William Jennings Bryan, the Scopes trial. Oh, no, 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 no. I, uh, it, it, it's all crap. Mm. What uh, was it like, though, portraying, having to embody William Jennings Bryan, the fundamentalist? Well, I, having been raised as an Orthodox Jew, I mean, I, I know the fervor of, of, of what intensity can create and uh, it was easy to just take from the Orthodox Jew and put it See. into the Orthodox Christian. Uh, and I'm not sure how Orthodox he was anyway. But uh, it, uh, uh, it's all so blatantly plain how people can follow the God and turn him into a false idol. Now, a role that might have been more to your uh, personal taste is FDR. Yeah. You, you portrayed him. You've portrayed him in a one-man show. I dug show. him the most. You dug him the most. Yeah. That's what started me on this, uh, performing uh, throughout the country with my daughter, being my chief booker and <laughs> producer. <coughs> uh, FDR. It started on a cruise ship. Uh, doing a performance, and they suggested that I take it out on the road, and I did, and I did that for several years. And uh, now we've graduated to God Help Us and to A uh, Man and His Prostate. <laughs> so I, I'm busy doing public service all over the place. Yes, you are. Now, you actually are a political activist. You've worked very hard, uh, trade unionist, president of the Screenwriters Guild. No, no, Screen uh, Actors. Screen Actors Guild, and you took on Charlton Heston, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, that was a... Uh, 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 yeah, he was, he was taxing. Speaking of God and Moses and the yeah. Ten Commandments, uh, yeah. what was yeah. the issue, do you remember? Well, I uh, was condemned for bringing Latin America and our perfidy in Latin America uh, as an example of 
our big government interference in the affairs of little people mm -hmm. below us. And uh, Heston uh, condemned me for that and attacked me for mm -hmm. that. And uh, whereas he himself had gone to Vietnam and uh, entertained the troops, so to speak, as if he could entertain. <laughs> and uh, uh, it, uh, to him, that was not, not being political. But for me, it was political. I was trying to stop the killing in El Salvador and Guatemala. And uh, uh, he, with his espousal, of the School of the Americas and the Army program in teaching the Latin American leaders how to kill best mm. uh, uh, was performing evil, in my opinion. Mm. So I had to speak out, got a show canceled, mm. like Lou Grant, mm. and uh, uh, was labeled a commie by most people. Well, maybe that was a compliment, you know? It's mm -hmm. after the fact. Yeah. yeah. So in the show, in the play, um, God Help Us, there's a, a lightning round where the two protagonists or antagonists ask you, ask you questions. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if I can do a lightning round with you. Go, girl. Okay. Hmm. Death penalty. <coughs> 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 Phlegm. That's a good answer. There. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, death penalty, uh, it's evil. And it, um, uh, un un until they know how to clean it up, it should be banned forever. Did you know that our state, Wisconsin, was the second principality in the world to uh, repeal the death penalty? No, I didn't in, know that. Yes, so we were kind of proud of that. Like, I think it was mm. 1850. Mm -hmm. So you have also been a spokesperson for NARAL. I've seen you in, in, in a film uh, on abortion rights, mm -hmm. reproductive rights. So let's do reproductive rights. Reproductive rights? Yeah. Whatever... Uh, uh, whatever the woman wants? Well, whatever the woman wants, but w with limits. I'm, I mean, there, there are measures, there are limits to everything. But you support Roe versus Wade? Yes, I do. Thank you. Now, also, you were early on single-payer health care. You know, I, I'm still not sure what all that means. But you, you worked for that in California, didn't you? No. Yeah. No. So before well, people were talking well, about well, it. What, listen, uh, <laughs> we, uh, uh, we do not take care of our people sufficiently. Our health program sucks, and uh, we should expand as large as possible the government taking from the military and pouring it into the health care and education of our people. Uh, th those are the two biggest assets we have, the health and education. And if we don't take that money and spend it wisely, then we're worthless. I have a question now. Yeah. The separation of church and state. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, what did... What did uh, what did Jesus say? Render unto Caesar. That which is Caesar's. Yeah. Render unto God that which is God. Yeah. Now, the argument comes in, which is which? <laughs> well, in the United States, our government is a secular, non-religious government. So yeah. there you go. So. Well, uh, they, um, they, they failed to propagate the fact that most of the founders were deists and not necessarily religionists. Yeah, Jefferson and yeah, Thomas, P Thomas Paine and them. Yeah, right, exactly. right, right. Yeah, you know about Thomas Paine. Yeah. I do. Yeah, I'm the first radical. And yeah. now you know about Oliver Sacks, who was an honorary director of FFRF, um, because you you read Oliver Sacks about autism. Yeah. So I think a lot of people watching this wouldn't know that you've been an activist to raise funds for autism mm -hmm. education. Well, my, um, my son and daughter-in-law have taken upon themselves to create the Ed Asner Center, which is for autistic sufferers and their families. So we, we, we have a, 
wraparound institution by which we hope the center will encourage people to attend and get their child treated, ministered to, and in which the family is also comforted and educated yeah. as to how to deal with their patient. And how did you get interested in autism? Well, for one thing, uh, my, my youngest son, who was born out of wedlock, is autistic or was judged autistic. And we have, uh, he's now 32, has gotten a, uh, a degree from the University of Southern Ooh. Connecticut. And uh, he'll be coming out for Christmas from mm. New Haven. Uh, my older son had two sons, and the youngest of whom is autistic. Uh, less, uh, more of an autistic than my youngest son. And uh, he married a woman who has two or three, I'm not sure, uh, children who are on the high end of achieving. So this is very personal for you. Yes. So you've done a lot of awareness about yes, autism. Yes, yes. So you have a lot of charitable well, background. Well, I mean, it is, it is, it is unbelievable to, uh, the best example I can give you is when my youngest son was about eight or nine and he was riding in the passenger seat and a cop pulled me over and I rolled down the window and I'm waiting for the cop to walk up to the window and tell me what I did wrong. And my son, without any preparation whatsoever, jumped over to the, pass the driver's side of the window and he turns to the cop and he says, do you know who you're talking to? <laughs> and uh, I went, Ooh. So well, we're out of time now. Very and loyal grandson, or son though. We know who we're talking to. We're talking to God, which has been a real pleasure for two atheists today to talk with God uh, on Free Thought Matters. So. And how has it benefited you? Well, we our views have been enlightened somewhat. So. Oh. Well, we're out of time. Thank oh. you. Thank you so thank much. You so much. We need bigger sponsors. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for watching Free Thought Matters. Because Free Thought Matters. Thank you.